Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant. We got a hello, fun hello. show, just packed full of stuff this yeah. week. Um, we're going to be talking about Flash, new YouTuber special, reverse engineering Linux. Well, mm-hmm. reverse engineering on Linux, uh, audio hardware just makes me excited, excited to talk about that. Ryzen frameworks with AMD goodness mm-hmm. inside. Sweet. And a new version of OBS that we're going to use right now. So hopefully nothing gets mingled during the recording of the show. But we'd like to play a little bit of catch up right at the beginning. See what's going on. What's new in our lives. And Jill, you, <laughs> you count. Yeah. I don't count things. Oh, yeah. So this week marks my fifth anniversary of being a host on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't believe Ben. It's been five freaking years. <laughs> Awesome years. <laughs> You've gotten a lot better too. You remember yeah. the first episode was rough. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we should go back and watch that. No, oh not. yeah, <laughs> you should. <laughs> I have a I have a very uh, uh, close uh, close up of my head too, so I'm a little closer <laughs> to the camera <laughs> in those days. <laughs> yeah, if you watch like week to week to week, you don't notice um. You know, Bard's our ability to make the best looking, best sounding show that we can for you at home. You, it's very in- incremental upgrades. But when you go back like a five year jump, you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Things have really changed. Um, you know, uh, and it's always fun. I, I know. Um, I'm like, wow, look how young I used to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Get anything else? Go- you're going to Disney oh. tomorrow, right? Yeah, Disneyland. So, um, yeah, to celebrate my five years on LWW, I'm going to go to Disneyland tomorrow. All right. <laughs> of course, I go every month, but I've I've uh, timed it for this week. I thought that would be appropriate. <laughs> you going to get Steve on a ride? Yes, absolutely. Just one. That's all we need. Just one <laughs> picture of Steve on a ride. Put him in the teacups. <laughs> oh, he won't go on that one. <laughs> that makes him sick. <laughs> all that spinning. He doesn't like the spinning rides. He'll go on... The roller coasters now, though, with me. He'll go on Big Thunder Mountain and and Space Mountain and Matterhorn. <laughs> oh man! Well, may, maybe baby steps, right? Baby steps. Yeah. We'll get them there. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> we we'll get them in those big, bad, spooky um, teacups. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to tell everybody about. I do probably about every three months or four months. I just get the urge to do manual backups because most, like most of you at home, I have my backups automated. And always test your backups, right? Absolutely. This is a big thing. This is an important thing. But I just get the notion. I'm like, I, I want to manually back up like the home folders of all the boxes in the studio. Just peace of mind. Nothing else. And it takes forever. You know, you take the home folder and I'm like, I, all right, well, let's just make a tar.gz or bz2. And you're good with it. I'm like, this takes forever. I was like, surely in 2023, there's got to be a better way to do this. And there mm. is. Um, there's an application which is tar compatible called pigs p-i-g-z nice and it uses all the cores which was really handy ah. because i was backing up you know just like uh, on jackbox the daw in the studio i moved that over to thread booper and i'm like okay let's, and it's just sitting on the one core and thread is not very fast ipc you know it's just a bunch of cores right and i was waiting and i was waiting and i was waiting I was probably like three or four minutes into it. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. That's when I did the search and I found pigs and I found a way to do it with a recursion into the directory and to zip everything up. Probably took about 45 seconds. Wow. It, yeah, it leveraged mm-hmm. all 24 threads on the nice. system and it was done. I just wanted to share that with you. If you ever find yourself sitting around going, I'm on, like for a big project, uh-huh. look into pigs. Also, OBS compile guide is in the works. There's a new version of OBS out, and you really got to think to yourself, why would you want to compile a version of OBS? Maybe you want to try the latest and greatest. I think there's a nightly PPA for people using the Ubuntu's, but if you're on anything else, there's probably maybe nightlies for Arch. But maybe you want to roll your own. You want to include some things or exclude some other things when you're building OBS, or maybe you want to try new features not in the nightlies. I do that all the time to because you you know what it works like and you have pull requests and people are like hey i have this cool feature like there's a version of new nv encode available right now for testing that will greatly reduce the cpu over overhead for encoding with nv encode on nvidia with cuda 
and you can build that and play around with it. And that's just not something you're going to get outside of being able to compile the program yourself. Plus, there's always the satisfaction of being able to make something. Knowing yeah, that, hey, absolutely. <laughs> I can do this myself and I made this. So I think that's pretty neat. And uh, we do have a YouTube channel. Or if you just go to LinuxGameCast.com, you can see my little three-minute video I made on this little guy who ate one of my SSDs. Yeah, poor Vent. I had to break out Hammer Chan and threaten it. Uh, me and Jill was, uh, we, we were talking about that in the pre-show. Uh, go back and listen to that if you're a patron. Uh, and Jill's had the same experience with the, some of these enclosures. Yeah. You put an SSD into them and it's a USB external and you plug it in. It doesn't want to let go of it. <laughs> like at all. There was no yeah. way to, and I wasn't doing anything for us what I was telling Jill. But like I didn't do anything for that video to like, you know, haha for the video or effects. I was like, no, I couldn't get this thing out without, I, I was scared I was going to either break the PCB inside the caddy itself, mm. or I was going to mess up the connectors, just that leverage, mechanical leverage on that. I'm like, uh-uh. So it's just a quick, fun little video I made about that. And I got a case of the SADs. We were talking about that in the pre-show. Um, I got home yesterday and, you know, we did Trackmania. Which is good. We have uh, Yay. You know, 14 maps. We have some crazy maps, especially that weird downhill green one right at yeah, the Yeah, that one's uh, definitely an uh, LOL map. That's, that's a silly one. Uh, <laughs> some fun ones. We do that on Tuesdays and Fridays. Come hang out with us if you like playing 13 year old um, puzzle platforming racing games, uh, Trackmania Squared. There's uh, that, all the information's pinned in our Discord channel. But after that, after that, I'm like, okay. We'll get done with that about, you know, six, seven. I'll do a Linux shakedown stream of a game I've been waiting on, The Last yeah. of Us, part one. I've talked about it a couple of times. I've been waiting to play this. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's my type of game, and I've never played it before because I've never owned a console. Uh, a recent, you know, last console I had was a 32X. You do the mess on that. Yes, get off my lawn. And uh, I went to go pick it up. And it said, mostly negative reviews. I'm like, oh no. And I went into our Discord and I saw that Strider was playing around with it on a Steam Deck and he posted a screenshot and it looked worse than the PS3. And I'm like, what's going on here? Everything just looked real plasticky. He's mm, like, yeah. well, I have it on low. And I'm like, ew, that's a bad looking low. And he was getting like 30 FPS um, on the Steam Deck. I think 30, 45. And... Uh, yeah, I'm just sad about that. I'm not going to give them 60 bucks until they get it fixed, because I did that for Spider-Man. And Spider-Man took like six months before I was able to play Spider-Man at a reasonable, acceptable speed on my system. So, aw, I know, poor me. First world problems. Yeah. That is just disappointing, because I heard the series is so good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yeah. That, that's just my type of, uh, you know, like semi-stealth. They're killing something. Man, I love those types of games. I'll wait, maybe. And, you know, we were all concerned about it because um, it was the same porting house that did the, um, oh, what was it called? Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah. And if you don't remember <laughs> that snafu from way back in the day, that, that was a shock oh, because they pulled the game while. from Steam. Yeah. They removed yeah. it. It was so bad. They're like, we're not going to sell this anymore until we get it fixed. I'm like, well, Shouldn't you have thought of that before you put it on sale? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. I remember that. <laughs> it is back. And um, yeah, I, I'm just going to wait on that. I am, I'm very, very disappointed. But uh, whatever. Uh, let's talk about what we used to use to make video games way back in the day. It's our first story. And it's Ruffle. Yeah. Not, is, it, uh, is it salt and vinegar or a ranch? Ruffles. Uh, ranch. <laughs> Think ranch. <laughs> so we are getting closer to being able to play most of our old Flash games and animations once again. So we can do that with Ruffle. And Ruffle is an Adobe Flash Player emulator written in the hipster rush, Rust. <laughs> rush. <laughs> written in Rust. <laughs> the wonderful coding language known as Rust. And Ruffle runs natively on all modern operating systems as a standalone application and on all modern browsers, including mobile, through the use of the good old WebAssembly. And you can install the browser extensions in Chrome and Firefox-based browsers. 
And what's cool about this is that Adobe officially stopped supporting Flash in 2021 and has blocked Flash content from running in Flash Player, and web browsers have also removed all Flash-related software. So there has been a desperate need for us to go and play our favorite Flash games. And fortunately, an open source project has come to the, come to the task, and we have Ruffle. And recently, there was a huge uh, big update with lots of improvements to Ruffle's AVM1 and AVM2 engine accuracy for better playback and support of ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3 games and SWF animations. So this is just uh, really, really exciting. And there's also improvements to uh, mobile uh, devices, which I'm going to let Vin talk about. Oh man, uh, very, <laughs> very excited, happy to see a bunch of this stuff because uh, it. the big thing about this one is they finally got uh, support for mobile devices kind of hammered out for the yeah. most part. And uh, the text input boxes are finally supported in context menus now even work on iOS, which like that's impressive. Mm -hmm. This release also includes a dynamic audio buffering playback, which is going to help out for any systems that were struggling like really big projects. But I had to think about this. Um, because I never thought this project was going to get beyond Action Script 2 and mm -hmm. never really get make any real progress with Action Script 3 because, like, the Action Script 3 runtime, way stricter. And um, here we are. Like, a lot of stuff, like, game wise, is now playable. And, you know, Ruffle is the reason Homestar Runner content is online right now in its original form. Yeah. You can actually go back and watch the original Homestar Runner, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. And you got to think about Flash. Uh, Flash was the original like 2D indie game engine before Unity. Yeah, it really was. You're so true. And so many people got their start on uh, uh, doing Flash animation. In fact, for several years, I even uh, taught it for a beginning animation class, Flash. And that was really great. So we got um, my students, I, I had them, they could do animations or they can do inter interactive animations or they could do games. Mm -hmm. And I got lots of good content from them because of that. <laughs> that was and awesome. Like back in the day, I started with Flash, um, developing in Flash with Future Splash, which is what it was called yeah. before. It was called Flash. And I That's worked right. with Flash up to Flash 4, you know, definitely with the early days of Action Script. And then I moved on to um, Shockwave, Macromedia developer and Lingo and all that fun stuff. But, uh, you know, I hated Flash, but it, it, it allowed pretty much anybody to get creative back in the day. You know, it didn't cost a lot. And it was, uh, you know, it worked on Windows and Mac, and it didn't cost much for the uh, for Macromedia to get Flash itself. And Adobe, mm -hmm. when it comes to game development, Adobe, as with most things, is 100% responsible for killing it off. But not maybe not like you think, because they did a thing back in the day where they wanted to charge a rev share to game developers for using mm -hmm. cross-compiled code with Stage 3D and like Unity, because people are just exporting their games in Flash from Unity. And yeah. not buying Flash itself, uh, or OC has a you know Creative Suite three or whatever it was at the time, and Adobe's like, uh huh. Well, here's a thing we're going to make you. And then people just started, you know, it brought on you know the Unity Web Player and things like that got developed. So you know, this is uh, this is just really good to see. This is really cool. I like a project like this, and it's super important because when I was scrolling through, you saw the uh, sponsors for those of you watching the video version new grounds right Think, things you immediately this just brings back all the memories cpm star um armor games wow. yeah wow games, yeah um doll divine and congregate classic stuff <laughs> congregate yeah it's a classic Man. definitely um uh some of my favorite favorite games that are uh, playable now with ruffle are bubble bobble the revival Chronotron, and actually one of my favorites that I I spent lots of hours in was Dino Run Marathon of Doom. <laughs> you remember that one, Ben? <laughs> I remember Dino Run. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it was a, it was a different time. We we were simpler creatures, but I mean, it, it's for preservation alone that is just fantastic. Yeah, it's absolutely. And I know so many people today that still want to, you know, still 
play flash games, and that's their their dominant games they like to play are flash games. But they were simple. So, they, they were like yeah. the old mobile games of the day. Now, what I would like to see is uh, we definitely, like one of the Linux Gamecast pre-shows, we went looking for this, uh, flash authoring tools just don't really exist. So yeah. that's kind of sad, but hey, that's all right. That's all right. All this is going to be in our show notes, um, by the way, so go check that out at linuxgamecast.com. Now, Jill, I want to talk about what is um do i have it back here <laughs> oh i think you have one <laughs> no i know I, I, I have the, i have the original okay. for a long time jill for a long time this focus right the focus right uh scarlet is what i called the youtuber special you yes know, this, is, this is what you bought you're like i'm gonna start streaming or making videos on youtube or twitch you know just streaming in general you run out and you bought a focus right and you paired it with the wrong microphone, which was the SM7B. Then you went out and bought a cloud lifter because you wanted to keep the mic on the other side of the room. Mm-hmm. Not realizing <laughs> that you bought a kick drum mic or a vocal mic that you got to get right on top of, and you? But times have changed. The new YouTuber special is this guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Go XLR revolutionary online broadcaster platform with four channel mixer, motorized fader, soundboard, and vocal effects. Why is it so popular? Oh, let me tell you. Not because it's necessarily a great interface. There's nothing wrong with it. And we're, we're talking about TC Helio, um, Helicon. You know, they say, hey, it's got four Midas studio pre- Behringer preamps. Behringer is Midas. Oh, now. Behringer. Yeah. And you, nothing about this is <laughs> what, it, what it has. What it has. Can I? Does this have a zoom? Oh, it's got a zoom on it. Okay. It's got this. It's got a swear button. Where's that? Where's the beep uh-huh. button? Ah, uh, I can't find it. Jill, help me. Oh, no. There it is. There oh, it is. there it is. There uh, it is. That's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Bang at pound. Uh, right. Uh, Cash. <laughs> it's never really worked at all under Linux. Uh, not to any extent. It's got a bunch of, you know, neat little things packed into it. It's a neat piece of hardware. Right up until you tell me it's 400 bucks, I'm like, get out of here with that. Yeah. However, however, Go XLR Utility, we've talked about this in the past on the show. They got another update and they've been slowly but surely reverse engineering the snot out of this and that just, mm, awesome. make, just gets me all kind of happy. And um, what's there to say about this? So, you know, here's the thing. Uh, this is like a straight up now full on configuration utility, and they pretty much taught the Go XLR just how to Linux completely. And this is it now works with Pulse Audio, which is great. It works with Pipewire. No word on Jack. No word on Jack whether or not this works. And you know, as Joe pointed out, it's made in Rust because reasons that you got to do things in Rust these days. Mm-hmm. And the latest release of this, it a lot of new. Uh, what do they have? New containers and UI improvements. A sampler rewrite to help decrease latency when recording, which is nice. And the ability for the command line interface to communicate over HTTP, which I'm sure you can integrate, get up to all types of interesting and squirrely things. Love to see it. Love to see it. Because again, I always say this to anyone involved in hardware and hardware support for your company, you need to push this up top to the people making the decisions because the quickest, and I mean absolute fastest way to get your device reverse engineered is not to release Linux drivers. And this is yet another in the long yeah. running <laughs> examples of this. This is how it's done. People will start digging in your hardware. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not making this up. You look at, um, so true. I always bring out black magic. Black magic is pretty much always at Linux support from day one and good proper desktop. But there's no reverse engineer black magic drivers or any of the black magic hardware. Why? Because the drivers are there. What works the incentive? When you, when you tell a group of people that like hacking on stuff, no, they go, hmm, let, let's see what we can do about this. And this is, uh, this has been going on for a long time. This, uh, I have a bunch of like Motu interfaces from the mid aughts, 2006, 2007, 2008, when Mark of the Unicorn were making Firewire audio devices and the Fado people came and asked, Hey guys, could I, uh, you help us out and like show us a how some of your backend works, you know, we'll sign NDAs and whatever so we can develop the drivers. And they said, we're not going to bother with a bunch of smelly Linux nerds. Yeah. So they proceeded <laughs> to reverse engineer their entire stack, which is why 
open source drivers are so huge and so important because none of that hardware is bad today in 2023. You know, an audio interface from 2005, especially a high end one, is just as good. And I'm working on a video about this, mm-hmm. but planned obsolescence because Moto is like, well, we don't support the new versions of Mac and uh, we don't support the new versions of Windows. But you know what? If you buy our new thing, you can use it. Not if you're on Linux. We're like, we don't care. We got the drivers. We'll make the drivers work with the new stuff. It's great. Yeah. Because the hardware is perfect. Keeps it out of landfills and stuff like that. Fantastic. Can't bring myself to buy one, Jill, because again, they're like $400. <laughs> yeah, they are expensive. And now that you told me they have uh, Behringer in there. Now, Behringer is awesome, but it's entry level. Behringer not, makes you know, cheap stuff, but Behringer also yeah. makes expensive stuff. They make high-end stuff, too. Yeah. Um, it's it, mm-hmm. a lot of companies like that. They have like the low end and they got the high end, you know, Behringer's got stuff like the X32 series and the X series stuff and the wing. And like, they, they do have high end and bought mm-hmm. like, you know, Midas, you know, they bought Midas, they bought, uh, spirit that people who make your microphone. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> uh, that's a spirit yeah, dynamic. It, um, yeah. Spirit dynamic. <laughs> so. I, they have like a mini version. If I can, I have one on the wish list, but it's still like two hundred bucks. So I, I want to do a guide for one of these because you know, as is tradition with so many projects. Where are the screenshots, guys? Yeah, I know <laughs> no screenshots. <laughs> well, there's something else cool about that besides them releasing a, a dot dot deb and, and dot rpm uh, is. Um, all their UI elements now in the application are now accessible to screen readers, which I think is wonderful because that is a big problem, especially for the visually impaired community. <laughs> and people like me who sometimes need to use a screen re- reader because the application's uh, fonts and, and you know, functions are so tiny. I just want to so. see what the screen reader says when you hover over the square button. Yeah, I bet you it's something like Qbert. <laughs> Just about non- nonsensical <laughs> no. stuff. I'm down with it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and this should make uh, Linus Sebastian's life a little easier. Yes, the squeaky Linus. This should make him uh, make it easier for him to get his Go XLR four channel mixer working on Linux. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an issue not too long ago. <laughs> that's, uh, 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 that's a special case, Jill. It's a special yeah. case of a human being. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, AMD framework goodness is back with AMD powers. Yeah, so there are two new framework laptops available. One is uh, the framework laptop 13 with a 13 gen Intel core. And the one that we're all excited about, the framework laptop 13 with an AMD Ryzen 7, 7040 series processor. Woohoo! And not only is performance scaled up, but framework delivered refinements to the day-to-day use experience with a higher capacity battery, matte display, louder speakers, and more rigid hinges. And I have a little story about the hinge (laughs) from scale, actually. I was doing an interview and uh, the CentOS uh, booth had um, their wonderful framework on display running Cent. And I accidentally waved my arm. I hit it and the hinge went, woo! It, it, it slammed close real easily. And I didn't really hit it that hard, but it slammed close. So that, that is something that <laughs> needed to be fixed. And that laptop was just fine. I didn't hurt it <laughs> in the process. <laughs> but also, uh, the new laptops are now available for pre order in all countries they currently ship to, which is the US, Canada, UK. Germany, France, Netherlands, Austria, Ireland, and Australia. And as before, both pre-built configurations start at 1,049 USD that work out of the box with Windows 11. Yeah, I know. Sad face, right? We put Linux on it. And the Framework Laptop DIY Edition starting at 849 USD, allowing you to bring your own memory, storage, and operating system including Linux. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I was just hoping they, they'll, they'll eventually in the future have some pre-installed with uh, Linux. And what's also cool is now you'll be able to select your bezel color and keyboard on the DIY edition when ordering with a range of new bezel colors coming 
this uh, th throughout the year. And yeah, I got to, like I was saying, I got to play actually with two framework laptops at the Southern California Linux Expo. And I was really impressed by the sturdy feel and how light and thin they were and how performant. So, so framework has been nailing it with modularity, upgradability, sustainability. They just have it all, all there. It's like our dream laptop or our dream computer. It really They've been doing is. good. They've been doing really, really Good. And, you know, it, I come Windows 11, but you don't want to remind you, these are optimized for Linux as well. Uh, they've yes. gone through all the troubleshooting guides and they provide official support for Manjaro XFCE because that's the best desktop manager in the world. <laughs> and also <laughs> Linux Mint 21.1, which is whatever it's running, you can install XFCE on it too and be cool. Um, yeah, they got, uh, they got a Linux page. All right. Check this out. Let's see. I didn't even go to their Linux page. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's good. There's a, oh, then it tells you Wi Fi, Bluetooth, fingerprint reader, stability, yeah. easy setup. So look at that. Just what distros are, everything works out of the box and what distros. On and, all cylinders. Uh, yeah. Really good to see the Pretty first awesome. shipments for the Intel uh, later this month. AMD boards will ship in Q3, AKA July. Uh, Pre orders are fully refundable, 100 bucks. Keep that in mind. All of the upgraded modules uh, are compatible with the existing framework laptops. So, you know, any of the extra bits that you've bought, you know, to the additional modules that you can add, you know, Wi-Fi, extra stuff like that, which is really good. And really, this is the absolute dream. Why we, I think a lot of us are excited about framework, simply because we've been told for the last 30 years that this was impossible. An upgradable laptop that is yeah. slim, sleek, easy to do, couldn't be done. Gateway, Dell, whoever, all throughout the years, HP, like, no, Acer, uh-uh, can't, can't happen, impossible. Here it is, right in our face. And absolutely, you know, we don't mm -hmm. have performance numbers for the Ryzen 7040 series laptops just yet, uh, but it shouldn't be too bad because the 7040 series, that's the drop-in replacement for the old Ryzen 6000 series. And so we're getting Zen 4, RDNA 3, and there's up, uh, they ship an up to 8-core variant, so that's good. And here's another thing, though. They have, you know, of course they have a uh, 3D models. So if you want to take the new motherboard, because you can buy a new motherboard, put it in your existing framework, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. And just upgrade it that way. And then you have your old motherboard. Like, what do you do with that? Well, of course you can 3D print a case. Yes. Which is neat. <laughs> but one thing I wanted to say, they have a, they partnered with Cooler Master. So, so you can awesome. just buy a case now and plop it in. It's got a stand on it and visa mounts on the back but you can turn your old framework or you can buy a new amd motherboard and pop it into one of these guys and it's really cheap it's like 30 bucks or something like that if you don't want to be bothered with a 3d printing 39 dollars. so yeah very really, reasonable yeah <laughs> yeah it's visa mounted too so cool 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 very yeah. happy to see this very excited and you know they're reasonably priced too yeah definitely and there's something really cool coming down the pipeline for them. They're actually going to be releasing a 16 inch, the Framework Laptop 16, uh, this year sometime, um, closer to the end of the year. And it's supposed to come with a removable discrete GPU module. Sweet. <laughs> I'll have to see what they're using because there is a standard for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There that have been nobody in, ever yeah. uses, but. Uh, Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Let's see where they go. Now, uh, framework, I want a 20 inch. I want a 20 inch laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I'm Plunk. I'm just happy the 16 is coming cuz that's what I've been waiting for cuz the 13 is a little bit small screen for me. Yeah, so, that's a little tablet size, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> think about it like that. But um you know, yeah, 16 inches that's good. Better battery in the new versions as well. They manage the same size battery physically. But they've managed to squeeze out a bit more juice, which is mm -hmm. great to see. All right. So one of the things we're running right now is OBS Studio. We use that for streaming. Uh, I build a build my own version. Basically, I strip it for parts and I take out all the extra stuff that I don't need. Add in a few things that might not be standard, you know, such as jack support. A lot of distributions don't ship jack support. And we run all jack audio, everything in the studio. But the new version is chocked full of features. Um, maybe you don't know what OBS is. It's streaming software. It's free. It's open source. And it's been running on Linux for a long time. Really good support. And if you're thinking about streaming to YouTube, Twitch, wherever, it's 
probably where you want to start. Uh, I really can't think of an alternative on Linux. And the newest beta, a couple of things in this that I want to talk about, mainly uh, streaming support for AV1 HEVC to YouTube. So AV1 is going to be a huge change uh, in how much bandwidth you need to get good video. And all of the new stuff supports it, the new NVIDIA cards support it, the new uh, AMD cards, and even the ARC series, um, Alchemist yeah. cards, all of those mm-hmm. support it as well. So that's been enabled, and um, you know, I can't bring myself to buy an A770 as much as I kind of want one. But I know. <laughs> and I got to be honest, like the 49 is just out of my budget right now. So uh, we're just going to have to wait, and I'll, you know, eventually we'll get there, and I'll be able to do some stuff and play around and make some guides for it. But there's also support for multiple audio tracks and the simple audio output, which is really cool because we want to take a look at, I have it up and running here. Do I have a screenshot of, uh, I'm on my Twitter page. Look at this shameless self-promotion, you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, here it is. That's, uh, it that's is. the new setup for the simple page, which I was happy to see because I can talk people through setting this up and, you know, a better way than just your standard output. Uh, but you have multiple audio tracks and simple output and makes it way easier. You also have lossless audio as shown in your recording options from simple output. And you used to have to go to the advanced and create a bunch of stuff that people looked at me like I was absolutely insane when I showed them the advanced step. They're like, I don't know. I don't want to type in these moon glyphs, but then that's all weird stuff. So you can get a really good high quality recording right from the simple stuff. And you get better options these days, which I'm very happy to see. They've also fixed an issue with V4L2 source on Linux where the capture device's frame rate would be a little bit squirrely. Mm. So they've gotten that done and uh, they fixed listing Pulse Audio monitoring devices incorrectly. Yay. Um, Here's a big important one, though. If you're using Jack, like me, my brothers and sisters out there, they've changed the naming of your Jack syncs. So they will now display OBS in the name, which means it's going to break all of your routing. (laughs) Jill thinks that's cool. Yeah. She's like, that's awesome. I really want to redo all my routing. No. Because what you have with the jack is, you know, like a situation like this, we're getting audio from another PC. You know, I'm I'm talking to this Jill's on another PC and we're running in over the network and it goes into the DAW and the DAW sends that over the network to the streaming PC. And all that has you have to like save all those routing connections. You know, it's like dragging, 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 dragging. And you do that with a snapshot. I use AJ Snapshot, but you can use a session manager. All of that that you've had saved is gone. You have to redo it because of the renaming. Just keep that in mind. I don't want anybody to get any big surprises installing this and going, hey, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Also, something that I've been using for a while um, is the hardware decoding for media playback. You know, if we're playing back a video or anything to that effect, can now use CUDA. Cool. For decoding, so that'll take that hit, and we're talking that's that can be significant playing a little video, and you don't think about it, especially if you get a bunch of stuff stacked up while you're playing it at the same time. So if you get an Nvidia card, good news all around. So yeah, um, anything you got on that? Uh, yeah, so um, I think it's cool. They actually added HEVC and HDR support to the VAPI encoder for AMD users. That that's really sweet. And they also significantly improve screen capture performance on the Intel uh, Arc GPUs. Mm. So that's wonderful to hear, too. Uh, I don't know anyone who's used it yet for that, but <laughs> I, I'm hoping one of these days that me and Ven will get a, our hands on one and be able to play around with it. <laughs> it's uh, one bug we did discover right at the beginning of the show. Um, I have a couple of... Uh, Black Magic deck link cards in the thread wrapper. Oh yeah. So I noticed a bit of video stutter. If we go from what's an easy way? If I go from this shot, you know, I'll start waving, and if I go to this shot, ah, you see yeah. that. Yeah. But it doesn't happen when we go back. Just. Just when you transfer to the bigger. Yeah, they. Yeah, there was a one of the commits was uh, the, some type of a frame ingest estimation for deck link hardware. So I'm going to have to go back and play with that and do my right thing in some metabug report so people can look at it so that won't mm-hmm. make it to the official version until that gets solved, whatever it may be. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about running Doom on a Commodore. Why? Because we're absolutely insane. But before we do that, we want to take a moment to thank you for making this show possible. Everyone who supports the show, the best way to do that is patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. 
We have a new patron this week, Joe. Yeah, say. we do. Because if you do join, Feud. we're going to shout you out on the show. Like F E W 2. <laughs> Feud. Welcome back, Feud. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see him him back. Me and Ven earlier were like, that's a name we know from the past. <laughs> it's been around for a long, long time. I remember Feud from uh, yeah. the IRC days. Billions of years ago in the future's yeah. past. Uh, if you got a moment, share the show, social media, all that. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support button. Bunch of donations. If you want to pick us up anything, and again, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, get access to the Discord where we're hanging out the other six days of the week. Get the live and uncut version of this show and Linux Gamecast weekly if you need about six hours of Linux content in your life. That'll do it. Access to our show notes and so much more. Also, we have a Amazon wish list for the host. Yeah. Uh, just got a bunch of blinky <laughs> stuff if you want to pick that up for her why would you do that well it just makes jill happy also you get to yeah. send in a note that jill has to read because that's my <laughs> stipulation like hey can we have a wish list on the show i'm like mm, what would make it interesting okay you got to read a note when they send it in I'm like fine we'll do absolutely. that absolutely <laughs> i i could i could have more plushy pengu penguins in my collection and uh, RG <laughs> rgb ones to boot <laughs> <laughs> while i don't have a personal Amazon wish list. I put one together for the studio of things I'm yeah. thinking about, planning on buying, looking at doing the Epic system. I think that'll be a fun build. A couple of audio things, uh, really expensive keyboards and uh, like monitors and curtain studio stuff. And look, there's that little evil thing, $229, which is more than I think it's worth. However, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about Doom Woohoo! that you can run. Using a Raspberry Pi. Yay. Mm -mm. This is awesome. It's rad. It's rad, Doom. Turbo rad, yeah, Doom. It sure is. <laughs> Doom on a C64, C128 using the rad expansion unit. Uh, welcome to this tech demo. This is so neat. It, now, it's awesome. A couple of things. The expansion unit itself is just a neat piece of kit. Again, all the, this is going to be in our show notes. Uh, it connects to the Commodore 64 cartridge port and uses a Raspberry Pi 3A, 3B, or 02W to emulate the RAM expansion unit of the era. Now it does bypass the uh, 6501, 8500, 8500 CPUs um, to provide the full power of the Raspberry Pi's ARM CPU, but what does it do? It gets you this. We gotta take a look at this video. It legitimately gets you doom. Yeah, 50 on your frames C64. per second. Right? Pretty cool. <laughs> <sighs> oh man, um, that just neat. That's neat, and you know that, like, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I would expect Doom to look a little bit worse on the C64, but. Yeah, it's, it's actually not bad considering that it's using the, the graphics um, from the C64's original VIC-2 chip. Uh, pretty impressive. It, it shows you how, how powerful that, that uh, GPU was back in the day. <laughs> That's great. And again, I want to uh, give this just a mention of the cartridge project itself um and this guy's got a bunch of cool stuff but the rad yeah. expansion unit itself is there it is look at that how cool is that so sweet then yeah and this is it. yeah this is a lot easier to do doom emulation on than uh there there is another project called the uh, super cpu where you can upgrade the c64 cpu and, and play doom with that but this is a lot easier <laughs> So definitely <laughs> a lot easier for the average user to get going <laughs> that's neat and that's something that stuck with me i think from the early days the first time i ever installed like doom and dos i think the shareware version yeah. it said something like as oxygen prevail pervades our atmosphere so should doom that's always like stuck with me though yeah can it run doom great subreddit as well absolutely ladies and gentlemen it's been awesome hanging out with you but we got <laughs> to run thanks for showing up come check us out live if you get a chance we do this at 3 p.m on wednesdays Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Check the schedule button. It'll do the time conversions for you. And we'll see you there. But until Yay. next week, let's queue up some music and roll those credits. Aw. And thanks again, uh, Feud, for coming back again and being a patron. Awesome. Now we have you on Discord, too. <laughs> oh, <cool>. no. Fancy <laughs> keyboard equals studio equipment? Oh, yeah, Jill that's Bryant, not a fancy keyboard. That's a, that's a Black Magic. That's a DaVinci Resolve keyboard for ed video editing. So, yes, oh, studio keyboard. Yeah. It yeah. Is, it's not even fancy. It's just stupidly priced. 
And then earlier, I was trying to remember the name of my mic. It was the Aston Stealth. Yes. <laughs> I, I was spacing on the name, and then got bought by another company, and then got bought by Behringer. <laughs> Behringer just straight up bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! So thank you to all our wonderful uh, patrons, and for those of you in chat, we have so many. <laughs> Three, six, eight. Until oh next my God. week, ladies and gentlemen, believe. we'll see you. Good night. <laughs> Love you all. Yay. <laughs> What's that, Joe? <Jill? laughs> A heart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs>